So if you haven't been living under a rock, you probably heard about the pre-construction strategy. I know it was one of the first ways like I learned about real estate investing and that's what I thought everyone was doing. But in 2023, pre-construction investments are really coming back to haunt people. A lot of people are having trouble financially to close or assign these units and it's really affecting their livelihoods like a lot of people might actually go bankrupt from this stuff and i'm not just saying this stuff this is stuff i've personally spoken to people about that have these situations and i'm not here to like make fun of people or something it's just to let people know this is a real thing and how they can probably avoid making some of these mistakes so generally speaking like pre-construction became popularized the last two decades because it's such a simple and easy strategy anything that's simple and easy usually gets the most attention especially when you can make promises of such big returns right so the premise is with pre-construction is basically you're buying a property or a unit in a building or a townhouse where you're going to invest a lot before the actual project or that house is actually completed so a lot of times it's like a three to four year window and once you sign up for that project based on speculation you expect the prices to rise like five to seven percent every year so basically what you paid for that unit three years ago so you're gonna profit on whatever you paid for that unit three to four years ago based on that five percent every year appreciation and the way real estate works you get that appreciation on the overall cost. So if you bought a condo for 500,000 at year five or year three, you're gonna see 5% a year on that 500,000. Now with pre-construction, you're usually putting a deposit down up front, and within the next year, two years, three years, however long your uh, project completion date is, you're gonna put the remainder of the deposit up to 20%. And then you have to close on the unit. Now, here's the interesting thing, which is why this probably became more popular than it even should be. A lot of people just started figuring out you can assign these units to investors or homeowners that actually need a place to live before you even close on it. So what would happen is you would buy into the condo project, put your deposit down, and by the time the project is about to be ready and you actually have to go and get a mortgage to actually close on the property and move in, the builder will let you pass that contract onto another buyer, but you're not giving it to them for the same price you picked it up at. So if you bought it at 500,000 and now it's worth 600,000, you literally don't need to pay any financing fees, don't need to close with the bank and you transfer that piece of paper to another person. That person pays the difference between what you paid 500,000 and 600,000. So not only do they have to close on this property, but now they're paying an extra hundred thousand dollars to you and that's all cash that goes into your pocket now anyone with a brain cell was able to do this and there's a big industry set up behind this right so there's builders developers big big real estate teams and that's why it became so popular because it's so scalable for agents it's like you don't need to leave your house you just get this document and this uh project paperwork that tells you like you know what the terms are the conditions are the location etc uh, you set up your marketing material you shoot it out to thousands of people a couple of them click you don't need to show a property you don't need to do anything and then you know uh, people just have to give their information leave their deposit builder pays you and then for the builder it's simple they don't need to do anything they just hand off these projects to a bunch of agents who do the marketing and track people now i'm gonna say like this isn't necessarily a bad concept because it works with the right type of property and in the right market with the right environment, like where you're not having like crazy appreciation and where you're not expecting like massive returns continuously because that doesn't work in any market, right? Anything that's too good to be true, it usually is. And if it's happening, it's just a matter of time before it stops, right? And that's what we saw the last couple of years. So now this is where like reality kicked in for this form of investing. So a lot of people bought projects in 2020, 2019. And you gotta remember when you're buying a pre-construction, you're paying more than 
a similar property that's five years old because they're saying, hey, this is brand new, so you have to pay a little bit more, right? So you might pay like a little bit of a premium when you're buying it. That's all fine if things go as planned, but then in this case, now we're in 2023, property values are less than they were in 2021 a lot, in a lot of cases. So basically, if you bought a pre-construction in 2020, 2019, and you paid that premium where you were paying for it as if it's um, a property that you would buy in 2021, now you have to close on it. And when you have to close on it, you have to go to the bank, right? And the bank has to give you a mortgage based on the appraised value. Now, when the bank is going to appraise the value, these properties are worth less than what you paid for. So you have to make up that difference. So if you bought a $500,000 property and it's worth four seventy-five, dollars and you put up that 20%, $100,000 deposit, you still need to pay the builder $400,000. But the bank might say, hey, we're valuing this at four fifty. dollars so that remaining 50,000 that you and the bank um, still have that needs to be accounted for, you gotta pay for that cash. So that's one or exit strategy for investors, right? When they're closing on it. So that's one issue. Second is, is they'll assign it to people. A, the majority of the real estate market is slowed down. People don't wanna buy, people are scared. There's a lot of fear in the market. Yes, you can get some pretty good deals, but transactions are down by 50%. So who's gonna actually like, you know, commit to some of these things. Plus, what are you going to assign it to them for? Right? Because the whole concept of assignment is so you can make money. So now if you're some investor who signed up for this project in like 2020, 2019, and you're like, well, I'm going to make, you know, maybe even 20 grand assigning this. Now you're probably going to take a 20 grand loss because you have to pay someone to take this from you. Right? So, I'm saying all this to point out like the simple fact that this whole strategy is like flawed. It doesn't make any sense, right? You're basically like passing it on to the next person who's willing to hold the bag. Like that's what it is. Like it's not um, fundamentally like it doesn't make sense in the way that it's been pitched the last little while. I'm not saying like there's no way to actually execute this. Obviously, we need builders to build. They need to get their financing in order. And a lot of that comes from those initial deposits before the building's built that they get from potential clients or customers that are going to buy these projects. But the concept of like just buying, 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 buying anything, putting your money into any sort of pre-construction project and making money is super flawed. And we're seeing the effects of that now where I've personally spoken to people that, you know, they're going to take a hundred thousand dollar loss because they can't close on the property, right? because they never planned on closing the property. This is the type of stuff that happens, right? Like you'll see when you introduce these very easy um, concepts for people to follow that make them a lot of money and it's easy, then they just have tunnel vision. So a lot of people are just like, well, technically I'm just gonna assign this condo project so I don't need to close on it. So I don't need to get a mortgage. I'm not even gonna think about it. But now you can't assign it so you have to possibly close but you never thought about getting that mortgage and your financing is not in order. So this is where we're at. And this is why a lot of people now who thought of assigning, they can't. So they're like, can I close on it? They go and they check the mortgage rates. Now the mortgage rates are high and they can't close on it. So it's like they have to forfeit their deposit. But now this is the other problem. If you even forfeit your deposit, the builder gets screwed because they got to find a way to now fill that unit. And remember, real estate activity is down, buyers are down, uh, there's a fear in the market, people don't wanna buy. So now the builder has to deal with this. So they might sue you. So it's like a big mess, right? It's like a, just a ball, it's like a snowball of like problems. And that's what's gonna happen with a lot of these transactions. That's why you're gonna see a lot of marketing right now where you, you can get good deals. That's a, the that's a thing I, I should point out here. Like, you could probably scoop up a pretty good deal if there's someone letting it go for like a really good price because some people are like, you know, they don't have a choice or, you know, they're going to cut their losses. But honestly, if you're like someone uh, that's not familiar with a lot of this stuff and you've probably been targeted by a lot of this marketing because it's probably one of the most 
uh, popular formats of investing and it's been popularized in the greater Toronto area and surrounding areas and I'm sure it's similar in other provinces too so you really got to avoid this because you can take some major losses and what I will say is you can probably find properties that are very similarly priced or even cheaper than a lot of these pre-construction projects like I see projects in like Oakville and um, even Hamilton, I've been seeing stuff like for like 600, 700,000. And I know it's easier to pay that deposit over time, but honestly, I would say just like hold off on it and you can probably find properties for like 600, 700,000 in Hamilton that are detached, right? Um, where honestly, like you're getting way more for your money because A, you don't have any surprises. You don't have to worry as much about the market. We're at the bottom of the market and you have more control over what's happening like you're not waiting for three years to see what kind of happens with this project, what happens with the market. Like that's the real problem, right? Like everyone expects things to go one way and that's not how the economy works. So I would say like opt for better options. So if you're like a first time home buyer or even an investor, I mean, I've been finding people deals like for 600, 700,000 the past year um, that in some cases are pretty turnkey. They're massive. Um, lots with houses on them that you know if you want to make it look like some of these pre-construction projects you can do so by doing renovations and honestly it just makes more sense it's more predictable you know and right now in this economy you want predictable like it's not a joke especially if you're like it's your first round and you're putting everything into it you don't want to gamble right so I would say just be careful signing up for anything pre-construction related, or even if someone's assigning a project and you're seeing it, run your numbers correctly. Um, and if you're looking in the Hamilton area, reach out to me. You know, I'm gonna leave a free guide below for Hamilton investors or people looking to purchase in the area in regards to like the different areas here and what Hamilton has to offer. Um, because there's a lot of affordable options. You don't have to make some of these mistakes that I've been talking about, right? But yeah, feel free to reach out to me. My contact info is below as well. Oh,